Good morning, good morning. This is Grief Inspired Live. So we want you to get in here and watch what's going on here in the world of Grief Inspired Live. So good morning, good morning. So today is a very good live, I think, I hope. Big share, um, big stuff, big stuff. So, um, so excited to share with all of you. So I am gonna share with you today my number one secret weapon against grief, anxiety, depression, all of the bad stuff, all of the bad stuff. Um, yeah. I'm going to share it with you. So stick around. I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to give you some background. And then I'm going to share with you my secret weapon. So <clears throat> if you're here, it's likely because you're grieving. Wow, that's hot. Or you know someone who's grieving. Or you want to learn more about grief. And here's the thing. Most of us, I know I was included, when grief strikes, when you lose someone that you love and grief starts, the grief cycle, the grief tornado, the grief whirlwind, whatever you want to call it, most of us don't know what to expect from grief. We don't know because no one's told us, um, because it's likely new for a lot of us. Um, and so there's no preparation. There's no, there's no anything. If you're lucky, you can put your seatbelt on. If somebody tells you to put your seatbelt on and you're off to this ride, off of this journey, off on a series of events that's going to surprise you, that's going to challenge you, that's going to make you look within, make you decide who you are at your core and make you wonder whether or not you want to get up out of bed in the morning. Grief does that. Grief does that. So most of us don't know when we start embarking on the grief journey that grief is going to take care of, it's going to take over everything. It's going to take over our hearts. It's going to take over our mind. It's going to leave us feeling completely out of control because seemingly we have no control. All of the overwhelming emotions, the waves of grief that come and go, um, the everything that's unexpected for you, the bouts of depression when you think things are better because you've been better for a while and all of a sudden this, this second bout of depression sinks in and makes you wonder whether or not you're actually going crazy. That makes you wonder whether or not you're actually going to be able to get past this grief thing or if it's really just going to be all-consuming. That's what grief does to us early, early on. Now, the other thing that many of us don't know, and I certainly didn't know, that when we embark on our grief journey, whether we want to be on it or not, any underlying issue that you have, the things that were challenges for you before you were grieving, just become multiplied. And if you know what I'm talking about, let me know that. Um, I had anxiety, a lot of anxiety before grief. Um, and what I learned was that the grief process multiplied, compounded my anxiety to the point that it was really something that took over a lot of my life. And it was big. It was big. Um, and so for you, maybe it's anger. Um, I had anger issues before grief, before all of that strike, struck, struck, stroke, struck. And, you know, I had to deal with my anger. Hi, Katrina. Welcome. And when you're grieving any underlying issue that you have, the things that you haven't dealt with, the things in your life, the emotions, the trauma, whatever it is, the struggles, they become multiplied during your grief. Grief has a way of doing that. So today I'm going to share with you my number one secret weapon to grief. 
And if you haven't been following me, if you've just found me, um, I do post all of these on Facebook, or I'm sorry, on Facebook, of course, where we are now. Um, and then I also upload them to YouTube. So you can go to my Grief Inspired YouTube page and you can um, find all of my videos there so that if you wanna rewatch them, search them. Um, I did a really nice um, series. I've started doing more series. Um, I did a four part, five part series on healing from grief. Um, so be sure to check that out. But I wanna share with you um, what I consider to be my secret weapon. Um, and, and here's the reason is with all of these conversations, I try to talk to you. I try to give it to you straight because that's what I wanted. I wanted somebody just to talk to me about grief. I wanted somebody to tell me, Hey, what's going to happen? How is my world going to blow up even more? What should I be putting my seatbelt on for? What should I be pre preparing for? What tools can I use to help me get through it? Um, you know, and can you be there as a constant reminder that I can get through this thing, that I'm not the only person in the world who's gone through this, that I can survive this, that this can actually grow me, that through the struggle, I can learn more about myself, I can learn more about my life, and I can become a better person in the world for the people I love, for the people I've lost, for the people I've yet to know. So, that's what I try to do. So I want to start by by sharing a story with you. Um, I mentioned before um, that I had anxiety. Um, I've had general anxiety probably, you know, it started creeping up, I think, in, you know, in, in middle school. I was the kid that was like, I really felt like I didn't fit in anywhere. Um, high school, I tried all the different groups and realized that, nah, that group, you know, so I was trying. But anyways, it led to a lot of anxiety for me. And fast forward through college and my anxiety really started to hit ahead when responsibility in my life really became big. So I had gotten, you know, a good job, my first real job out of college, right? So I was making money. I was able to buy a house. Um, I felt like things were going well, but there was this overwhelming responsibility that you know, when good things happen to you, you think, oh my gosh, well, what if I lose this, right? I think that that's a, no that's a normal response. But for me, it turned into a lot of anxiety. Um, and I knew that I couldn't fail. Um, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure that I didn't fail, that I had to succeed. That as much as I succeeded and the things that I did well, um, I had to continue to do better as if there was this constant, this constant competition that I was in, that I had to do more, be more, be better, make more money, be more successful, whatever that was. And so that was all, I put that all on myself. Um, I can't really blame anybody else, but that's where my anxiety came from. Um, and I lived with that anxiety through, you know, from you know, I've been working in the career that I have. I've been building on it for 25 years, right? So this is 25 years worth of anxiety. Well, fast forward to 2020. Um, and this was, you know, last year, right before the world went crazy and berserk and bonkers. And I um, had met a man named Jack Canfield or learned who he was. So I haven't met him in person. Um, I've been on a lot of Zoom calls with him. Um, so I know him well. Um, but anyways, I was introduced to him. And if you don't know who Jack Canfield is, he is the author of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series books. Um, if you don't know what those are, um, they are short stories that really offer a lot of hope. Um, they feed your soul. So if you haven't checked them out, um, do that because I think particularly when we're grieving, I think short stories are good um, because our intention span is, is shorter <clears throat> because there's much more going on up there. Um, and I think that they're stories of hope. Um, I think they're feel-good stories. And I think that that's the kind of thing that you should be putting in your head um, when you're grieving. So check those out if you haven't. Um, but I took a course with him after I met him, I decided to take a course and <clears throat> he helps people do a lot of internal work. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm struggling here. Um, 
And so as a result of my anxiety, I fed my anxiety and I fed my anxiety or tried to quell my anxiety with food. Um, and during this course, I realized that I was trying to fill a void and that void was that I was emotionally hungry. Um, and that that's where all of my anxiety had came from or come from. Um, so my background's in biochemistry and molecular biology. So I'm going to give you a little biochemistry lesson here. But here's the thing is when we have something that, you know, becomes, you know, a bit of an addiction for us when we, when we use food to make us feel better or when we allow food to make us feel better, um, it happens because when we, when we eat sweets or we eat comfort food, there's a biochemical reaction that happens, right? Your body releases serotonin, right? Your stomach gets full. There's this warm, comforting feeling. You get the sugar rush of energy when you feel exhausted. Um, so there's a very real biological reason why we go to things like food, um, to try to fill the void. And that void for me was feeling, I was feeling emotionally hungry. Um, and that's where my anxiety came from. And again, um, same thing holds true. You know, food is not the only thing that I've tried. Um, I tried alcohol. Um, so alcohol makes us forget, right? Um, shopping, you get a high, you get a serotonin rush, when you find the perfect thing or when you spend a lot of money or um, you find something unexpected that really lights you up. Um, so there's reasons why these things work and there are reasons why we, we go after them. Um, I am as guilty as anyone, um, particularly with the food. But, I, but the point I wanna make is, you know, I was really emotionally hungry and and it had been that way for the 25 years. And that's where the anxiety came from. That's, I needed to fill that void. And what I didn't know, which I know now, is that in order to have my anxiety go away, I needed to fill that emotional void. And so the number one secret weapon that I'm giving you is a tool to fill that emotional void, whatever that might be for you. And your void is gonna be different than mine. Um, most people have them. Most people go through life suffering with emotions that are unresolved or traumas, um, you know, traumas from grief. Hello. Um, it's just, it's part of life. It's part of what we have to deal with. And so um, this is a way to help with that. And again, in all things, I want to give you hope. I want to give you the tools that I use to help you so that you can be happy. Um, so here's what happened for me. So, so in that course, Jack Canfield gave me some tools and I started using the tools. And as I started using the tools in the course, as he suggested that I use them, I started to unravel what my void was and what I was hungry for and where everything started to make sense. Um, and the void was the void that I experienced was that I felt really powerless. I felt weak. I felt unloved. I felt unworthy. Despite anything that I had accomplished, all the successes, anything that I had done, I was inherently feeling unworthy. Um, and I was in the course and I was you know, going through all of this and this sort of started coming to light. And what happened was it, it landed in my throat. It landed in my throat um, and I realized what was going on. Um, and here's what it was, right? So this didn't happen instantaneously, but here's what I learned in that course was that I felt powerless and I felt weak because I was looking for acceptance. I was looking for validation and I was looking for love and I was powerless because I was looking for it outside of myself. And the one person that I wanted the love and acceptance and validation from was unable or unwilling to give it to me, however you wanna look at that. Um, so what that meant for me is that I was giving all of my power away to everyone else. And I was looking externally 
to tell myself how I felt about myself each and every day. So if someone said something nice to me, I was on top of the world because I got a compliment. They liked what I was wearing. They liked what I said. I make good comments at work. You know, somebody said, wow, that was really insightful. But if anybody said anything negative to me, whew, I would go down into the depth of a despair. <clears throat> so it was really a situation where I was really, really powerless and very reliant on the world outside of me to decide how I was going to feel. But here's the thing. When I figured that out, and again, using this secret weapon, I figured this out and all of a sudden I was in a position to reclaim my power and to start accepting myself and saying, wait a minute, I have value. I have succeeded. I don't need that validation from anyone other than myself. I just have to accept myself. I just have to love myself and I have to realize that I am inherently worthy. And when I figured that out and mentally, this isn't just intellectually figuring this out, this is understanding it intellectually, but then pulling it into your heart and really getting it in your heart, in the space, in the center, where you're, you know, I always say the thing about grief is when you're in deep, in the dark, in the middle of the night, and you're grieving, you learn who you are because you have nowhere else to look but within, because there's nowhere else to go. So my anxiety lifted, and that was a year ago, and I was so surprised, because here's the thing, sometimes about grief or sometimes about anxiety, is you don't realize how in it and how overwhelmed with it you are until it starts to lift. Right, We get really comfortable in the pain. We get comf uncomfortable in the struggle. We get uncomfortable or comfortable in the depression and the sadness and just feeling sad all the time that sometimes we forget. We don't remember what it's like to feel happy. We don't remember what it's like to not have overwhelming anxiety that you just go through your day with. And so a year ago, my anxiety lifted and I was a new person. Like it changed me dramatically. Um, so here it is. This is not rocket science, but it is science and it's really cool shit. So do you wanna know what my secret weapon is? My secret weapon are these little bottles of essential oil. And you may be thinking, what the hell? And I thought the same thing too. I embarked on oils because I love how they smell. Here's lavender. Everybody loves lavender. When you are grieving, <clears throat> lavender calms you down. Everybody knows that the scent of lavender calms you down. That's why if you look around, it's everywhere these days. It's on your pillows. It's in your laundry detergents. It's in your cleaning products. It's everywhere. Um, so if you pay attention, you'll see it. And it does. It just, there was something instantaneously that happens. And I'm going to be doing a series um, over the next couple of weeks to sort of talk more about this and explain the chemistry, explain the science, um, help you to understand why smelling the scent of lavender, why putting an essential oil on your body can make a difference, why, why diffusing it in the environment that you might be working in or sleeping in or living in can make a difference. And everybody knows lavender, but there are so many other oils that will support you through your grief process and can help with the emotional unrest, healing the things that need to be healed, that will soothe you when you need to be soothed. Um, frankincense is my number one. If you could only have one oil in the world and they took everything else away, I would beg them to let me keep frankincense. Um, as someone who has been 
anxious and wanting to just calm the F down. Frankincense does that for me. This is the F that I use now. Um, and it'll do that when your world seems upside down. Um, Joy is an amazing oil, and these are blends of oils. Uh, well, frankincense is a true oil. Then there are blends, blends of oil. Um, joy lifts your spirits. It takes you out of depression when you're grieving. There is valor. Valor is a blend to bring you and help you feel courage when you need when you need that extra ounce of courage. Um, there's an oil called Believe to give you hope when you can't get through it. There's oils of hope. There's oils of forgiveness. There are so many gratitude, acceptance. There's so many. So I'm not going to go through, you know, all the oils right now. What I'm going to tell you is that my number one weapon, my secret weapon to help move myself through the grief process, and I wish I had known, I wish I had known, which is why I'm bringing it to you now, um, is really, really remarkable. And if you need to know more about what the real, pure, therapeutic grade essential oils are, I can help you. Um, I can help you find them. I can help you know how to use them, um, which ones to choose, you know, where to get started. And again, I just, I just can't say enough about this being a tool, this being a secret weapon, this being something to support you as you move through your grief. Um, and then beyond, right? It just becomes something that, that helps. It really helps. Um, I can't say enough. And if you... If you've tried them, if you know what I'm talking about, let me know down below. Oh, excuse me. <gasps> I just burped on camera. Um, Valor put some bravery on right there. It happens. The body happens. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be doing some, some conversations around it, some more education uh, to let you know what I use, to let you know what works for me. Um, I will encourage you to try on some things, see what you can find. Um, I'll talk about, you know, where you can get the oils, where you can, you know, how you can get started. And it doesn't have to be something that's overwhelming. It's designed to be something to support you, um, to support you on your journey, to help you and let you know that you don't have to do this alone. And there are things that you can do. There are there are ways you can be active in your grief, and oils is one of them. Um, I share so many of them here um, in this group um, or in this on this page in my personal groups. So my personal group is no mom should have to grieve alone or should grieve alone. Um, my YouTube channel, all of it. Um, I do all of it because I want to help. I know how hard grieving is. I want, I want it to be less difficult for you than it is for me, or than it was for me, um, so that you can learn from from what I've already gone through, and um, and take advantage and take benefit from what I've taught you. So I hope that helps. Um, next week I will begin doing some intensive research. Um, to give you all of the tools and the information that you need um, about these oils to help you in your journey. Um, and so before we go, I am going to smell this a little bit. This is some gratitude. This is a strong blend of an oil. Balsam fir, coriander, I don't remember all of it, geranium frankincense. There's multiple oils in here and they are so amazing. And I'll teach you why they work, why they work and how they can help. So we will see you in the next video. Stay tuned for more. And as always, let me know how I can support you. Let me know what you need. Um, you're not in this alone. 
You've got this and you're doing great. Bye everybody. Have a great day.